When you say it's a four, the four thing about you, what are the other three? What are the th- what are the three things that are just the most interesting to you outside of? Family? Well, first and foremost, I'm a white man. Don't forget that. <laughs> Um, no. Very important to you. Very, no, <laughs> straight white male. Well, no, I love think, America. Love America. I think you know. Uh, number one, definitely uh, uh, father. You know, like that's that's the main thing about me that I care about the most. Like I just, I don't really care like what people think of my comedy or what people, you know, what some executive thinks of my. Po- I don't care at all. I just care about like what my kids think of me. Um, and then I think uh, to being uh, a partner to my girlfriend is, is huge because we have the kids. So I think like that is, is, is very, very important to me. Um, and then third son, my mom, you know, my, my very close to my parents. So like gotta be like a good son, even though I, you know, go on stage talking about, you know, come leaking out of my asshole. Um, it's, you know, and, and, they, but you're then, all over the spectrum. Yeah, then, then, then the fourth thing is, is listen, I love doing comedy. I, t- I, it gives me an outlet. It's, it's great. You know, it's like cathartic for me to like, you know, I, th- I feel bad for people that don't have an outlet. Like you'll see something on the news that really angers you or social media that like angers you. And like, you have nowhere to, like you can't get it out where I can get it out with comedy and say how I feel in a joke format. And it makes me feel better. But I think, you know, doing this for the money, comedy for the money is like, that's when I think we all start to, and I, by the way, I went through a phase uh, last year where I was like, I'm definitely doing shows and meet and greets and stuff for the money. And I couldn't figure out why I, absolutely hated myself, even though I was selling tickets, making more money than I ever made. I was like, but you, like, I would look in the mirror and be like, you fucking suck. And I couldn't figure it out. And it was like, oh, because you were starting to do things for the money, not for the creativity. So now it's changed. Even though I know I'm wearing these glasses and you're like, what are you talking about? Like, you look like an asshole right now. I actually like the glasses quite Thank a you. bit. Thank you. I appreciate it. it. Yeah, it makes me, uh, I do it. They're Je- very Jeffrey Dahmer-esque. And mm. I just, yeah, I want to, I. it's good. I want to eat black men. Is that um, an inspiration and, for you, Jeffrey uh, Dahmer? Yes. <laughs> Who's middle thing? Yeah. No, I, I actually saw that what happened was, as I did- Here's the thing with me. Okay, here's what you have to know about me. And, and can't wait. And 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 my career. Whenever whatever, you know, like Midas, you know, like anything he touches is gold. Anything I touch, just know that if you put me on your network, and I feel bad for you guys with this podcast, when I when you get me on, things start to go bad for you. I don't know why this happens, but it just starts to implode. Oh, no. <laughs> so so I I can't I, I did um, uh, in hours, uh, it was 45 minutes that we put out for Netflix. Okay. Put out for Netflix. Great. Loving it. Show comes out immediately within 24 hours of my show coming out. Netflix announces they've had the worst quarter in the history of their business. And the stocks have fallen so much that like they may have to shut down their business. Great. Then I do a show, uh, for, uh, vice, called um, Super Maximum Retro Show, okay? It came out, the show comes out. It's actually doing pretty good. I'm like, the curse is over. Vice has now completely shut down as a network. It does not exist anymore. This happened in like a month ago. Vice completely, my show came out and then Vice crumbled, absolutely crumbled to the fucking, to the ground. Um, You know, I had a pilot I had a a pilot show for CBS in 2016. I thought it was going to make me like the next Ray Romano. Like that's what I was being touted as. And everybody was talking about being from Queens and my new version of it, whatever. Literally the day that the people who pick the the, uh, shows, the like the actual people who are in the room who pick the five pilots that are going to go to series that America's going to see on the day, like May 14th, 2016. I'm talking about not the day before, the actual day. They're supposed to pick at 11 a.m. The day the guy, our champion is going to pick dies of a heart attack right away. Like dot dead heart attack. See you later. Done. Show never gets picked up. So I think, so the thing is with me is I've just accepted that, that there might be a level here that I'm never going to get past. But right now, if you allowed me to like push a button and say, you will never get another dollar, you will never get, your life won't change. You'll never get a dollar less. You'll never get a dollar more. You'll never travel less. You'll never travel more. Your life will be this for the next 30 years. I would push the bu- I would push it immediately. So that tells me, well, then you must be happy then with your situation. Cause I mean, it wouldn't even be a thought. It'd be like done in yes. Cause it's also like to the point, like when you get so famous, it's like, what's different about that? It's just more fucking people, you know, want Wanting to bring you down. Every ladder you go up in this business, it's 10 more people that are trying to pull you back down. It's like after a while, you're like, what, what, what is the point? What is the point of this? I just want to make enough money to invest it properly. I want to try to convince enough people to invest their money with me so I can swindle it. And then I just, I, I just want to like be a good dad and 
be there as much as I can and try for dear life to just white knuckle hold on to the current relationship I'm mm. in. <laughs> Even though that's wow. slowly falling apart. When you're when you're sitting there <laughs> <laughs> when you're sitting there a year ago and you're doing meet and greets and all this stuff for cash and all that and you're like you hate yeah. yourself. You can look in the mirror and be like, okay, this is why this is happening. What changes did you make for okay. you to be sitting here today? All this energy yeah. in the world, but a happy talk. person. Yeah. Yeah. He was you want to do play it? some I'll do it. brother. And um and and so so what happened was, is I couldn't articulate why I felt gross about the meet and greet. Cause I knew that the people who paid were actually happy. They were like, I don't mind paying this money, I, you know, even, but I couldn't articulate why, why do I feel so bad about it? And I think it was two reasons. One, I felt that I would do this for free for them. I genuinely like so appreciative of the people that come to the show. It's like, I will stand out there and do it for free. I, I, I honestly, like you don't have to pay. And then I heard my favorite band is the 1975 and the lead singer, Maddie Healy. Um, he, I heard him say on social media about meet and greets. He was like, if you're an artist doing meet and greets, he goes, here's what I want you to do. He goes, rather than going through Ticketmaster or your agent to get the ticket, you know, the money from the fans, take the picture with them talk to them for 30 seconds and then ask them to give you $40 in cash and see how you feel. And I was like, I Dios mio. Yeah. I was like, that's what I'm doing. And again, it's not a, dis it's not a thing. If people are doing it and the fans who want to do it, great. Just me as a person, I was like, I can't do this. I'm, I feel like I'm giving you the, sh what you're paying for is the show, my jokes that I've written, like my performance. But after that, I don't want to take any more of your money. Even buying the merchandise. It's like, Sometimes I feel, it's like, I don't, you, you almost like, you, you know, it's like, how much money do you fucking need, man? Like, you know, like you're, you're, you get to a point where you're like, I'm on this hamster wheel where it's like, I, I mean, again, going on a world tour is great. It really is. But it's like, you know, it, it's just for me, time away from my family, because time and money are the same value. Actually, time is more valuable to me now where I'm like, if you told me, Hey, I could get this amount of money, but it's going to cost six months away from my family. I'm like, I'm, there's no way I'll, I'll just make less money. I'll literally, I swear to God, I'll go back to being, being a physical therapist. I just don't. The entertainment business I think has just, there's a, like a nastiness to it that I'm like, I'm happy I'm in it. I love doing what I do, but there's a limit to like what I'll do. And I'm not saying that limit isn't sucking cock to get on TV. Yeah. 